Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. let's learn how to use machine learning AI in Unity using ML agents to create an AI with vision that can actually see. Game engines are actually perfect for doing AI vision since you can actually create a virtual world. In the real world, in order to get a visual input, you need an actual camera pointing at the world and capturing some photons. However, in a game engine, you'll literally just press a button and create a camera that can render the image and what it sees. Now I've got two interesting demos here. First, a very simple one where birds jump around and the AI sees them and shoots, and another interesting demo where the AI is herding animals by moving around the map and identifying the sheep and the pigs. The second demo also combines both classic AI and machine learning AI in an interesting way, so stay tuned to the end of the video. I also covered the complete getting started guide to machine learning with Unity ML agents in another video, so go watch that if you're not familiar with the toolkit. Machine learning in Unity is actually very simple and easy to use once you understand the basics. There's a complete playlist in the description. And adding vision to your AIs is also quite simple as we will soon see. It's really just as easy as adding a component to your agent. Learn all about VR and AR with the Patreon sponsor XR Bootcamp. It's a 6-8 to eight week bootcamp taught by industry professionals. Learn how to interact in VR, optimize your rendering and learn about dots. Check them out at xrbootcamp.com and use the coupon CM10 to get 10% off any of the master classes. So vision is awesome and really intuitive to understand for a human being, but the one big downside that is inherent to using vision for machine learning is simply due to the scale of the problem. For example, in the very first machine learning video where I made an agent go to a goal, I simply needed six observations. Then on the Flappy Bird agent, I used nine raycasts to detect two types of objects for a total of about 40 observations. And on the car driver, which also used Raycast, it had a total of about 50 observations. And here I'm using a camera sensor with a size of 50 by 50, meaning for a total of 2,500 observations. So that's a lot higher than all of the other examples, which means a lot more time is needed for training. That's why those big vision-based algorithms have to be trained on massive GPU farms. So with that in mind, let's first see how we can use this awesome tool. So here is my first demo. We can see birds jumping around from both sides. And right now I'm playing, so I can click anywhere in order to shoot. Now, naturally, the goal is to actually shoot the bird. So as the bird comes, I click on it, and yep, there you go, I've got a hit, and I can shoot all the birds. So as you can see, very simple demo. So here I am in the editor, and here's my agent. Everything, as you can see, is pretty basic. So if you've seen the getting started video, then all of this should be familiar. So it's got the behavior parameters and the script which runs the agent a decision requester, and then here is the new one. We have the camera sensor. So what it does is exactly what the name implies. So it takes a camera input and uses that as the visual observation. So I can see the camera that I'm using, it's this one. And here, this camera is set up to view a simplified version of the scene. So the main thing is over here on the culling mask, this one is set to only render objects on the vision camera layer. So over here, we can see the camera preview, and as you can see, it's all in black, except for white for where the bird is. Then on the bird object, here we have just a basic sprite renderer with a white pixel, and it's on that layer. So if we play the game and look at the camera, here we can see what the AI is actually seeing. So as you can see, it's constantly seeing as the bird jumps in and jumps out. So this goes back to what I said about the total size and total amount of observations. When dealing with visual, it's very important to simplify your vision as much as possible. Although, of course, as with anything related to machine learning, brute force is always a possibility. So if I had a massive amount of compute processing power, I could just use the standard camera view in 1080p and full color, and eventually, after enough time, the machine would actually learn. But in here, I just have my humble machine, so simplifying the visual made it so that the training time didn't take hundreds of hours. So back into the sensor, let's just look at the other parameters. So we can see the width and height for the visual size. Again, remember the bigger the image, the longer it will take to train. Then we also have a toggle for grayscale, which again, if you select grayscale, then what ends up is you have one channel, so essentially just one float per pixel. Whereas if you go with color, you end up with three floats per pixel. So with a 50 by 50 image, if it's in grayscale, you have 2,500 observations, and if you change it to color, then all of a sudden you have 7,500 observations. So it's a ton more with a ton more variation. Once again, assuming you're trying to train your agents in a reasonable amount of time with a standard machine, you should really simplify things as much as possible. So here, I'm giving the AI a simple 50 by 50 image with a simplified grayscale view of the scene. Then for the actions, up here you can see that they are set up as discrete with just two possible actions. And since the camera has a width and height of 50, and over here for the branch size, I'm giving them 50 of each. So essentially the AI is pretty much just working on a grid. 
Here on the agent code, we can see what happens on the on action received. And we have our two discrete actions. So one of them is for the position X and another one for the Y. So he simply gets the X and Y and tries to shoot it. And if it does hit the target, then it gets a positive reward and ends the episode. And if it does not hit the target, then it gets a negative reward just to encourage it to hit the target as soon as possible. So this is really all it takes in order to train this agent. So I've got this very simple, very small script. And then here just the normal ML agent's components, as well as the extra camera sensor. And again, for training, I used a manual curriculum, so essentially teaching it bit by bit, just like I did for the Flappy Bird agent. So I started off with a static, very large target. Then when it learned that, I increased the difficulty by making the target smaller. Here is the training graph. As you can see, it took quite a bit of time to learn, even though I started with a very easy scenario with a large target. So once again, this is the difficulty when dealing with Vision AI. But over time, it didn't learn. And then when I added the movement, it didn't even need to train anymore. It already learned to hit the white target, so movement doesn't really matter. And over here is the result. So as soon as the bird spawns, it gets shot pretty much almost immediately. So no matter where it comes from, the AI always hits it. Now, when training the AI, I actually made a small mistake. So here in the actions, as you can see, I just set up to receive two actions. So just an X and Y, meaning that the AI has no chance to simply not shoot. So whenever it takes a decision, it always has to shoot somewhere. So right now, the way that it's set up with a decision requester on a period of 20, this works just fine. That's about enough time for the bird to spawn and get inside of the view. However, if I pull it back and tell it to shoot on every single frame, then yep, there you go, that's the issue. Since once again, I didn't train the AI to be able to not shoot, so it always shoots somewhere, and when it doesn't see any white pixel, then it just starts shooting randomly. So what I should have done is instead add another action for either shoot or don't shoot. Okay, so this is one way to add vision to your AI. You add a camera sensor and assign a camera, but there's one more way. If you go into add a component, and in here you browse inside the ML agents, you can see we've got our behavior, camera sensor, decision, and so on. And all of here, we have the render texture sensor. So functionally, this works pretty much exactly the same. You would create a render texture, then for example, make this camera render onto that render texture, and then use that render texture in here. And as you can see, we have the other parameters as well. Then just for these last two, which I didn't mention previously, for the observation stacks, this one is how many frames will be stacked before being fed into the network. Meaning if you set it to just one, then the network will take a decision based on only a single frame. Whereas if you put it to more, for example, to 10, the network will be asked to make a decision based on the information of these 10 frames. So for example, if you send more than one, the AI will be able to infer some sort of direction from the white pixels. But once again, that has a training cost. So in my case, I don't really care for the velocity. So if I set it to one, everything works just the same. And then finally for the compression, you can set it to no compression or PNG compression. This is just to make it more efficient to send the data from Unity onto the Python trainer. If you set it to PNG, then essentially the final observation will be smaller. So that communication will go a bit faster than if you send it as completely uncompressed. All right, so that's one demo showcasing one way you can use machine learning vision in Unity. And over here, I've got another interesting demo. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. So I've got this AI over here and it's moving around. It goes towards a random animal, looks at it, identifies if it's a pig or a sheep, and then sends it to the correct pen. So sheep go in here and pigs go in here. The models for these animals are from a great asset pack. There's a link in the description in case you want to see it. And this is also an interesting example because I'm combining both machine learning and classic AI at the same time. And for another different thing, it's also using manual decisions as opposed to automatic decisions on every single frame. So the movement is handled through a classic AI and the identification of the animal is using machine learning AI. So let's look at how it's set up. Over here, I've got my environment and it's got this main script. And in here, I just got references to all of the various prefabs. And on awake, we simply start spawning and spawn the initial animals on random positions. Then on the agent, it has a rigid body in order to move. And then it also has a basic mover script. So here it is. It is literally just the most basic classic AI you can think of. It just calculates a move direction and moves the rigid body towards it. So it's a very small, very simple script. We can set a target position and you'll look at position and the agent goes there and looks towards a certain position. So once again, this is classic AI. There's no machine learning AI used in here at all. So over here on the environment script, I can essentially tell the agent mover and I tell it to go to a target position and look at a certain position. And when it gets there, that one fires off this event 
and runs this function which then causes it to take an action. So again, these actions are not happening automatically like we saw previously on the decision requester. Instead, they are manually. So as soon as the agent reaches a position, it manually takes an action. And then on this take action, it simply manually requests the decision. So the AI does its thing, it processes the visual input. And for the visual input, it is pretty much the same thing that we saw previously. So using a camera sensor and in here has a camera. Now this camera, instead of being an overhead camera like we saw in the previous demo, this one is attached to the agent. And once again, it's set up with a calling mask to only view the vision camera. And if we run the game and see, so in there we can see what the camera sees. So as you can see the sheep and the pigs, they have essentially cubes on top of them and they have a flat collar. So as you can see, the agent goes to a certain position, rotates to face the animal, and then it simply has that. So then it takes a decision and the AI is simply looking at the collar of the pixels pretty much. So I'm looking at the pig here, it's just the normal pig mesh, and then it's got just a basic cube set up to an unlit collar. Then for the action, it's just a simple and discrete action, either zero or one, and then it tries to select the animal, and if it gets the correct one, then gets a positive reward, and if it's a negative one, then a negative reward. Now for training, I just place the agent in a fixed position with no movement, then I spawn the random animal in front and ask the AI to take a decision. So it was a very simple training process, and now here, for this example and use case, I don't need, let's say, the shape of the image. All I want is pretty much just the color of the pixel in front. So in the camera sensor, I set it up with the smallest width and height, which happens to be 20 by 20. So essentially, you cannot have this lower than this. Now, in theory, you could obviously accomplish this scenario with just a raycast or by just using the center pixel of the screen as an observation, but using vision is a bit more fun. So here is the demo in action. The agent goes towards a random animal, looks towards it and then takes a decision. It says that this one is a pig and the pig starts going towards the pig pen, that one is a ship and goes in there. So it just goes randomly from animal to animal, constantly identifying them and it works out pretty much all the time. So this is a great example of how you can mix and match both classic AI and machine learning AI. Obviously you could handle the movement through ML agents as well by using the camera sensor or just some recast, but using classic AI works just fine and doesn't require tons of training. So before you just decide to solve every problem using machine learning, remember that you can always combine both. All right, so as you can see, adding vision to your AI is awesome and very easy to do when using Unity ML agents, but it does have a pretty significant training cost. Think of it as a problem with regards to a noise to signal ratio. Visual observations have a ton of noise and very little signal. So in the first demo, the AI sees this image, but the only useful parts of this observation, the only signal, is just these handful of white pixels. Everything else is just noise that the AI needs to learn to ignore. So vision is awesome, but in most cases you really want to simplify your observations to exactly what your AI needs to know. One of the benefits of working in a game engine as opposed to the real world is the fact that you can have the complete world state at your fingertips. For example, when training a robot in the real world, in order to identify an object, you don't have access to something like the global state of the world. So you need to process the visual input in order to identify the object. But when working in a game engine, you have complete access to that object and you can identify it easily, just via raycast and do a component call. That is much simpler to do and will result in significantly faster training time. So adding vision is awesome, but before you use it, make sure there's really no other way to simplify your observations. All right, so that's machine learning vision AI in Unity. Check the full playlist linked in the description where I'm adding all machine learning videos. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.